So when you are dealing with Visual Studio, if you see that the include that you have over here is giving you an error, and the file, your 100% is correct. You see there's a red line over here, and when you compile, it says cannot find standard input output header file. If that's the reason, it means you have downloaded or got a solution from someone else or from me, and the target version of your Visual Study Studio is not the same as mine. If that's the case, retarget the project, which means right-click on the project and go over here, retarget, retarget project. Okay, select something that you have available over here, whatever it is. This one, this one, it doesn't make any difference at our stage. And then click on OK, and then recompile. Okay, so whenever you see this include goes like that, it means somebody is using some Visual Studio that the version is not the same. And when you are loading, getting the solution, and start with the solution, you see the targets are not the same. That's when the standard input output or include your include gives you an error. Um, and when you compile it, it's gonna, the message is going to be that this thing is not available, this uh, framework is not available, download or install it. You just you can just retarget and, and continue. That's one thing. Now, about validation, okay? The validation that we are going to talk about, and you're going to do it in your lab, it's not foolproof validation. It's data entry validation. So what is the difference between the two? A foolproof validation assumes that the user that is sitting at the keyboard is nuts and is going to enter <coughs> stupid stuff that nobody can believe what the devil is that. Okay? You don't know what it is, and you have to take care of every single aspect of the mistake. <clears throat> Data entry validation, however, it means you're asking a user to enter a value. User understands, enters the value, but the value that the user is entering is not within the acceptable range. And you want to notify the user that that's not acceptable, fix it. Okay? So that's what we are uh, focusing on. The next time you're coming in, I'm going to tell you how to do foolproof validation. Today, it's just regular one. Okay? So. <clears throat> You can write it in 50 different ways. So I'm just going to go with one and see what happens, OK? So let's say I want to get someone's age, OK? I want to get someone's age, and I want to tell them that they have done it is not a proper age, that, like the value that you entered is incorrect, and fix it. So, so I'm going to say over here, printf, please enter your age, OK? And then. I'll quietly listen to what the teacher says. Then I'm going to go scanf, OK, percent %d. I'm going to get the percent %d. I'm going to get the age. And I'm going to go at percent %h. Of course, I don't have the age. I'm going to go up there and add it. So int age. <coughs> OK? Then what you need to do over here, if everything's OK, so um, Printf, everything good. This is when we assume that user knows what is the range of an age. OK? Let's say we want to do check for renewing a driver's license. When you renew a driver's license, the age of the person, first of all, you cannot renew a driver's license if the person is, what, younger than 18, because you have to get it at 16. You have it for two years. So if it's lower than 16, it's impossible. There is no renewal. They have to get a new one, right? So, and if they are more than, say, what, 70 years old, they have to go through eye exam and different things. Or I don't know what is the age, like 78? 75 or whatever. Let's say 75. So if you are greater than 75 years old, you have to go make sure that you, your, you, you, your understanding is good, you're alert, and you can do stuff. Okay? So that's our age, 20 and 75. If there is anything other than that, I have to issue an error message. So what do I do immediately after getting the age? I'm going to write a loop. I'm going to say while. I'm going to go with the bad scenario. So <clears throat> what is a bad age? If it's less than 20, right? So if the age is less than 20, or 
the age is greater than, what did we say, 75? So, <clears throat> so greater than or equal 75, let's say. Okay? If that's the case, then that's an invalid age. Enter a proper one, right? So in here, I'm going to say printf. I'm going to give my error message, invalid age. Please enter a value, a value between uh, 20 and 75. And I ask again. I'm going to go scanf percent d and I'm going to put it in the address of H. That's how you evaluate. So what happens over here is this. If user enters 15, <clears throat> that condition becomes true. It comes out inside. It says, invalid age, please enter the value between 70 and 20 and 75, and reads it again. If the value that they enter is, in fact, between 20 and 75, the condition goes false, loop breaks, and everything's good. Okay? If the value is bad again, it's going to do it again, and then again, and again, and again. Okay? But again, this is not foolproof. If you say, please enter your age, and the person says 20, T-W-N-T-Y, and hits enter, it's going to go bananas. It's not foolproof. It's just checking for the range of data to be correct. And that's what you're doing now. So let's try this and see what happens. So when I run this program, Enter your age. If I say 12, it's not valid. If I say 80, it's not valid. If I put 25, everything good. All right? So that's how, that, how, how validation happens in data entry with user interfaces. Of course, if we are reading information from a file, then we don't have such a thing. We just check. If, it, if it's wrong, we print an error message. We exit the program. We say file is corrupted. At this line, exit program. But when you are dealing with a user interface, you have to keep telling to the user, hey, do this, do this, do that. All right? OK, that was it. Thank you. I'm going to pause it, but not. There's a mechanism. Yes, something that you can, like you see all the values that we write over there that starts with the hashtag? OK? Like we have hashtag define, hashtag include. That's not part of a C language. That's part of the compiler language, if I could call it. C compiler language. It means you're talking to the compiler, asking the compiler to do something before it compiles. OK? So instructions to the computer, to compiler, to do something before compilation, they start with a number sign, hashtag. One of those things is define. The define that you see at top, it's a very high-tech one that we don't understand what it is. You just do it blindly as if, you know, it's something that I'm telling you to do and that's it. So not that define statement, another define. <clears throat> For example, like this, define, okay? I'm going to call it min age, okay? And I'm going to put over here 20, and I'm going to say define max age. And I'm going to call put it 75. OK? Then I'm going to take min age. Any place that I'm using the 20 and 75, I'm going to actually use that one. So in here, it's going to be min age. In here, I'm going to put percent %d. And I'm going to pass min age. In here is max age. I'm going to put wherever I use maximum age. And I'm going to put a percent %d here again. And I'll put max age. What is the purpose of this? What define statement does in this scenario, what define st statement does in this scenario is literally search and replace before compilation. So when you say define min age to 20, it means go through all the code. Any place you see min age, cut it and paste 20 instead. OK? Why do we do this? They're crazy. Put 20 over there. Number one, it makes your code meaningful. If I put over there age less than 20 
and age greater than. I don't know what is actually that value, but now I know that's minimum age. And this one is maximum age. Okay? Number two, if three years later, the Minister of Transportation comes to you and say, the limits of the age are changed now. Instead of 75, we're going to go up to 80, and we can go down to 16 or 18 now. Something like that. Okay? Then you don't have to go through your program, hack it, try to find the logic and see where the heck did I use the conditions for thing. This is a short program. Usually your programs, it programs like what? Three million lines of code? And you have no idea where in your logic the minimum age are used, right? When you do something like this, you go at the top, you change it, and you recompile the code. And automatically it's going to replace all the places minimum age was used therefore your program can get updated like that and that's why the find statement is mostly used at our uh, level next semester you're going to learn something more professional and then the semester after that you're going to see that the find is going to be used for much more many more things called things like uh, macros and things like that but for now search and replace literally which means if you write something wrong over there, you're not going to get an error on minimum age. Because when the program is getting compiled, there is no min age. They are all replaced with 20. You follow? If I put over here, for example, if I put over here, <clears throat> x, y, z, OK? and I compile this code, it's going to say identifier x, y, z is, ident is undefined. You see that? And when I click, it comes over here. It says here you have x, y, z, and it's undefined. You look at it, there is no x, y, z over there. It's minimum age. Why? Because it was replaced with x, y, z, and then it was compiled. Therefore, the message is on x, y, z, not minimum age. Follow? Are we okay with this? And that's a defined statement. All right? So if I put 20, then everything goes back to normal, and it works perfectly. That's it. OK, pause again until we'll talk about the next thing. <laughs> Another thing that I have to mention is um, when you have a construct like this that is a loop, OK, the whole thing, the process from here to here, is the process of data entry. Okay, now if you want to repeat this few times, you know, the one we have 10 ages, 60 ages, the whole construct goes within a loop. This is when you have what we call nested constructs, nested loops, a loop that is, is inside another loop. So if I want to get five ages and find out what is the average of ages, for example, so int average age I have over here, and I'm going to set it to zero. Now if I want to get 10 ages, Define num nums. Let's say I have 10 ages I want to get. Then I'm going to write my loop over here. So I'm going to have a counter for ages over here, int c and t. And this construct that actually receives the whole information, this construct will go inside another loop. So for c and t set to 0. C and T less than nums, and C and T plus plus. And then I'll put the whole construct inside the for loop. OK? And now if I repeat this, this is going to repeat the action of getting the information over and over. So I can, for example, say average age plus equal age. And then at the end, I can say printf average of the age of the applicants is percent d, and I'll put the, put the average age over here. OK? So again, what I wanted to tell you what a nested thing looks like. So whenever you have an ent uh, 
Whenever you create an algorithm to do certain thing and you want that to get printed, you put the whole thing inside another block, and that creates nested blocks. That's all. Okay. How to find minimum and maximum in samples? So the the, the latest thing that we have written over here was to uh, get several names, uh, ages, and 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 find the average and print the average, right? Now I want to see how can I find out what is the lowest and what is the highest age that was entered in this sample. I want to know what is the youngest applicant and what is the old, how old was the, the oldest applicant for whatever reason. What you do, you create two variables. Again, anything you want to calculate or find, you create a variable for. Okay? I'm going to create the lowest age and I'm going to create the highest age. Then you put an impossible value for that value. So I'm going to put lowest case and I'm going to put the maximum possible age that you're going to have. That's impossible, right? And I'm going to put the highest age and I'm going to put the minimum age over there. So highest age becomes 18 and lowest age becomes 75. Something absolutely impossible. All right? Then I start sampling, getting the value for the age. After doing, after actually getting the age successfully, what I will do, I'm going to compare the age that I got with the lowest value that I have. So I'm going to say if the age that I got is less than lowest age, then lowest age is not lowest age anymore, right? Update it to that value. Okay? So say the value that I'm entering is 35. The lowest age was set to 75, right? So it checks. Is 35 less than 75? Yes. So 75 is not lowest anymore. Make 75 the 35. The exact same thing with highest. Is 35 greater than 20? Yes, it is. So set the highest age to 35. And then it goes for the next sample and the next sample. And each time the, law, the, the rule of lowest is broken, it updates it to the new one. And as a result, the new value, the, 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 the value that is the smallest, will be kept in the smallest value. Okay? Very simple and straightforward. Are we okay with this? You want me to walk through it once to see how it looks like? Anyone? All right. A quick walkthrough on it. All right. So I'm going to put this one over here and this one over here and move it a little to right. So I'm going to run right up to data entry over here. And um, so enter your age. I'm going to put over here uh, 50. We know that lowest age is set to, lowest age is set to, lowest age is set to, let me just enter 50. We know that lowest age is set to 75 and highest age is set to 20. Impossible values. <clears throat> so the data is received. Now it checks, age 50, is it less than lowest age? Yes. So make lowest age 50, and it becomes 50. Now, is age greater than 50, uh, 20? Yes. So it makes the high age, highest age 50. Now they are both 50. It's got to go up. This time, the next age that I'm going to enter will be 21. So it comes in. Now, is age 21 less than 50? Yes. So it sets the lowest age to 21. Is age 21 greater than 50? No. So it keeps the highest age 50 as it was before and goes back up. Now, if you look at it, the lowest age is 21, highest age is 50. Now, the next one's going to happen. I'm going to get the next one and say the next person is 65 years old. The value is entered, comes in. Is 65 less than 21? No. So the minimum remains 21. Is 65 greater than 50? Yes. So now highest age becomes 65. And it keeps going like that. Sixty-seven, twenty-three, fifty-six, thirty-four, twenty, 
57, 67 again, and now it comes down over here. In all the values that I have, lowest is 20, and highest is 67. And if you look at the message that is printed, you'll see exactly that, 20 and 67. And that's how minimum and maximum values in samples are found. It's a very, very known algorithm, okay? That's it.